perhaps the most unpleasant injury and an injury that every human being is most afraid of happening to him during a workout. Unfortunately, that impact caused my spine to break. And that's exactly why we're going to show it to you. Don't be next in line. Let's begin. So what's up guys, welcome to your fitness pal. And exactly two years ago, a 48 year old guy was bench pressing at the gym. Without any spotter behind him, he lifted a very heavy weight. The bar fell on his neck and he was seriously injured. Now, this is an injury that can happen to anyone, including people who have been doing it for years. Powerlifters. Scott Mendelson, a powerlifter who broke records in bench presses and took first place in competitions quite a few times. Two years ago, he bench pressed 1,121 one pound, which is a little more than half a ton, which is plus or minus a grown buffalo. The bar fell on him mid bench pressing, but miraculously he came out of it without any injury at all. And that was his reaction. Yeah. He took it really hard. And it's true that it's not easy to watch, but that's exactly why we're showing it to you. So you can learn from it and take countermeasures. Now, there was a case of a fractured rib due to the bar falling during a bench press. And there was also someone that it happened to him twice. Once in 2011, which he claims happened because he didn't put straps on his wrists. Previously dropped the bar on myself in a meet prior to this a few years before that. And it was a result of not wearing wrist wrap. Right here! Come on, but wait! And again in 2014. Now, is it really because of the straps? So, not exactly because there are two types of bar drops. One is a soft fall, which happens either from a relatively low height or from the fact that you're stuck here, between the devil and the deep blue sea. And the second one is a fall from above, where the bar gains momentum and therefore the impact will be more severe. And it was indeed more severe and the guy injured his spine. Unfortunately, that impact caused my spine to break. By the time I went to the hospital, they didn't let me leave because I couldn't stand up. Luckily, as you can see, he stayed alive to sit and tell his story and he also returned back to training. And did the surgery and it took me, it took me about three years to get back to normal. Now, and that's super important. When you, for example, bench press, there must be a spotter behind you. This can save 99% of the soft falls. The spotter will come and pick it up and you'll be good to go. And another way to avoid injuries like that is to do this and this. But unfortunately you can see that even having three spotters didn't help either in this case or in this case. Because that's a fall that you don't expect. But is this the only injury and how can it be prevented very easily. In 2010, in survival in one of the seasons, there was a task that caused a very common injury to happen, a shoulder dislocation. Serena's like a linebacker in this challenge. Oh, right your shoulder! Mm. What a pure soul. And that's really what happened to the contestant. She dislocated her shoulder. Medical. Fortunately, there was a really pure soul there, a doctor who put her shoulder back in place. But can it also happen during a bench press? So this is what Tristan Lee thought happened to him in one of his bench presses. Oh, fuck my shoulder! Oh. Okay, I just look at my shoulder. Oh. oh, I felt it pop out. One sec, one sec, one sec. Keep rolling, keep rolling. And I 100%, I felt it go like, like, I felt it go and like pop. I, it's literally right here. Yeah. Ouch. Now, as much as it sounds unpleasant and a bench press is starting to sound like you're going into a guillotine, after an evaluation, he eventually discovered that it wasn't a shoulder dislocation. Now she said it's probably uh, it's probably just rotator cuff, no uh, dislocation or anything. But we won't jump into conclusions, rather to research papers. So there were actually case studies that showed the dislocation of both of the shoulders during a bench press. But this is super rare and you can count those cases on one hand, which hopefully is also attached to the shoulder. Why? Because a shoulder dislocation usually happens when the humerus is abducted and laterally rotated. This 
This is the most vulnerable and sensitive position for a shoulder dislocation. Like for example in baseball when someone throws a ball, he's with an abducted and externally rotated arm and when someone else hits his arm, he can then temporarily say to his arm bye bye. But it is more rare during resistance training and especially during a bench press. But again, if someone does an exercise that provokes a situation where the shoulder is more sensitive for a dislocation, it can happen. For example, in one of the seasons of Ninja Warrior, it happened to one of the participants during the course, just like that. The jumping spider. Oh, is he okay? He's holding that shoulder. And that is an anterior shoulder dislocation, in which the humerus goes forward in relation to the scapula, which occurs in more than 90% of dislocations, and is way more common than a posterior dislocation, in which the head of the humerus goes back in relation to the scapula. Physiotherapy exercises for gradual rehabilitation have been shown in studies to improve strength even after 6 weeks. Now, to reduce a dislocation, meaning returning the crown to its former state, there are all kinds of techniques like scapular manipulation, and external rotation, which is very very satisfying just to sit and watch. Like to see the shoulder, just like that, snap back to place, instead of watching pimple popping videos, everyone and their own fetish, I don't point any fingers. But a rather interesting and special one, that was even published in this paper in 2016, the Devos technique, in which the patient basically returns the shoulder back to place himself. So, so you've dislocated your shoulder, right? Yeah. The patient exerts a constant traction on the injured shoulder, and the dislocation is reduced without any need for additional maneuvers. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so the shoulder got reduced on this. Yeah, and of course there are minor and more severe dislocations, but this one is an example for an easy to use, known traumatic and a quite successful technique. But let's get back to the bench press and have a real talk. Should you be afraid to bench press? Wait a second, let me think. No. You just need to... Bench press smart. One, always have a spotter with you. You can also carry him in your pocket. And about one rep before failure, he should hold the bar. He doesn't have to lift it for you, but he should hold the bar. That way he'll be able to catch it if anything happens. Two, try bench pressing also with dumbbells. First of all, it's a different stimulus and a nice way to diversify. And in addition, if shit happens and your hands declare a strike, you can just throw the dumbbells to the sides. Just pay attention there are no feet around. You don't want to solve one problem and create another one. <laughs> Three, if you're lifting heavy and there's nobody around you, and it's not recommended, but let's say it happened, you better not lock the bar because again, if sh happens, you can just tilt the bar and the plates will come off. Four, don't lift the weight that you are not able to lift. Sometimes our ego is less strong than we think it is. And five, pay attention to the tempo of each rep. Usually our repetitions will start fast and then slow down. If you see that the pace slows down significantly, this is a sign to say goodbye to the bar and place it back. Share this video with anyone you know. Write down here in the comments what video you would like to see next. And we will see you in the next one that will even be crazier than this one. Bye bye.